Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and in this video let's talk about the god Baal and how his reputation was destroyed because of the biblical writers and the Romans. So first of all, the god Baal is the real good god. He is the most important deity of the Levant and the ancient Near East. He is the king of the gods. He is a helper to human beings. And he was the most venerated deity in the ancient Near East and Canaan. His power was huge. And this is why the biblical writers had a problem and a war with this god. So first of all, we can receive information about Baal from the Ugarit texts. They were found in northern Syria. So I suggest for you, if you're interested in this topic, if you're interested in the ancient Near East and about this God, I suggest for you to read those texts, to read the Baal cycle. And to understand this information and to firm your own opinion. And you will see how many lies the Abrahamic religion is writing about Baal. So let's talk about the false information and misconceptions regarding the god Baal. First of all, let's understand the functions of this god. He is the king of the gods. He is the god of order, law, fertility, agriculture, life. He is a helper of sailors. He is the god of the rain, of thunder and storms. He is also a warrior god. So he is a god of war. Because he is courageous, he fights with the serpent and he fights with death itself. He always wins. This is why he is the king of the gods and his function is the most important. He is equivalent to the Greek god Zeus, which was inspired by the Phoenicians. Because that information spread to Greece from the Near East, from Canaan, from Phoenicia. So basically the Greeks took that information, they were inspired by those stories and they formed their own religion and system and their own gods. But it all started in the Near East. The god Baal he is a god that bestows life and abundance to humans. Because the Canaanites and the Phoenicians, they relied on his reign to bring them life and bring fertility to the land for agriculture. So he was the symbol of life itself. He is a beneficial god to humanity. And we find in many cultures the same god with the same function, but with different names like Zeus, Thor, Marduk, Perkunas, Perun, Hadad, Teshub. This is an Indo-European influence that maybe was influencing the Semitic people or it is a universal god of the ancient Near East that maybe also spread out to Indo-European speaking people. So I don't really know the origin, whether it is the Indo-Europeans who influenced the Semitic people or vice versa. The god Baal influenced many cultures. We find texts about him in ancient Anatolia, with the Hittites, with the Hurrians, we find him in Syria, Lebanon, in Mesopotamia, in Canaan, which is modern Israel. And we also find information about this God from the ancient Egyptians. So his power spread out across many cultures from the north of Anatolia to the south in Egypt. Because there were a time period that the Canaanites actually influenced the ancient Egyptians and they brought their gods to ancient Egypt. And in Egypt, he was equivalent with the god Seth. And of course, we can see this god in the European cultures, in the Nordic pantheon, Slavic, Greek, and so forth. 
So let's talk about the misconceptions regarding this God. He is not the devil. He is not an evil force. Those terms are from the Abrahamic religion's writings. The devil is an Abrahamic religion concept. On the contrary, the god Baal is famous for his victory over the chaotic sea serpent. Baal represents order and good force that is battling evil. Across the ancient Near East, the most popular story is of the storm god that fights the sea god, the serpent. The serpent represents evil and chaos. We have this story of Zeus fighting Typhoon. And we have this story across all the ancient Near East. We also find in the Bible how Yahweh is fighting the sea serpent. And from where do you think this information came from? It is clearly, it was influenced by the famous story of the storm god battling the serpent. Because we can observe many Yahweh attributes that were clearly stolen from Baal. And this is the most important theme of this video. The god Yahweh, the god of the Abrahamic religions that was invented much, much later, absolutely stole the attributes of the most powerful god of the ancient Near East. There is only one god who battled the chaotic forces, and this is Baal, the story of Yahweh battling the sea serpent is clearly a stolen story, an influenced story. And I also want to note something very interesting that I found in some book. The god Baal is actually killing the sea serpent. He's battling with this god, with this creature, and he's killing that creature and this god and wins. But in the story of Yahweh battling the serpent, Yahweh is making him under himself. So he's not really killing the serpent, but he's making the serpent under himself, which I find it to be very interesting. So who is really the evil God? It's clearly not the God Baal as, of course, the biblical writers and the Abrahamic religion, religions people like to always portray Baal as an evil god. But this is total false information. This is false information that is, that is coming from uneducated people who do not know history. Those people are zombies, they are just influenced by their Bible and they don't think that there is some history even before the Bible. So I suggest for all of you to read the Baal cycle, to read the story of the storm god fighting with the sea and to see his major influence in all the cultures of that region. So the god Baal he is the good, pure God that represents the good force. He is fighting evil. And you can read in many, many texts how the God Baal represents fighting with serpent. And in magical terms, it represents that he fights with evil influence. So in the magical world, when we have someone who is inflicted with evil, with sorcery, with something negative, and that person is suffering, in those ancient texts, the god Baal represents the force that is battling and removing this evil. He's fighting the serpent. He's fighting the evil. So the people who wanted to remove witchcraft, negative influence, sorcery, evil eye, they were using the god Baal 
as a force that is battling evil. So basically the god Baal is the most important deity. He represents everything that is pure and good. He also a helper to humankind. He intervenes behalf of humans. You can find those texts in the Baal cycle where he helps the hero of the story to receive a blessing to conceive children. And as I spoke about this, he's the bestower of wealth and fertility, of course, because he is connected with fertility due to his functions with, he, with the rain, because rain is very important in the Levant, in Canaan, in Phoenicia. Rain is what gives the land fertility and life to human beings. Because in that region, we don't see huge uh, rivers like the Nile or like in the Mesopotamia that they had two rivers. This region is dry, especially in the summer. And the story of Baal that is going to the underworld is the representation of the life cycle, of the weather cycle. Now, I wanted to speak about another topic in the satanic world, which is, again, I'm reminding you for the thousandth of time, the satanic witchcraft world that have a lot of demons like Baal or Beelzebub. This is the dark side of Christianity. So again, you don't need to work with those demons. If you want, it's something else. But please understand, in the dark side of Christianity, the ancient gods, they received a minor evil um, hierarchy. They are, you know, they considered to be demons. The ancient gods, the, the Abrahamic religions, they made them demons. They made them something evil. But you have to understand that this is only from the Abrahamic religion concept. It's not true. You can work with those gods directly. You don't need to work with them as Baal, as, as Bilzebub. This is all, in my opinion, just not functional and it's just not uh, educational at all. Go to the pagan tradition. You don't need to work with those ancient gods in the dark side of Christianity. But again, you can do whatever you want. I'm not imposing my opinion. But just know that the character of Baal and Beelzebub, those are characters that were demonized by the Christians. Beelzebub is an ancient Philistine god that were worshipped in Ekron, in ancient Ekron. His name was Baal Zebul. That means Baal the Great. Zebul represents someone who is high, someone who is in a high position, someone who is powerful. And it's not Bil Zebub. This is very wrong. This is Baal Zebul. So it was a form of Baal that was worshipped in ancient Ekron. And he was a healer god. And it was a Philistine god. So please, you know, read about the Philistines, the ancient Philistines. They got nothing to do with today's Philistines. Those basically are people who came from Crete. So just know that Beelzebub, it's a fictional biblical character. It got nothing to do with reality, okay? So Baal Zebul got nothing to do with flies, like the biblical writers are telling Baal Zebul, as I said, it's a high God, high Baal. So we can see in the book of Kings, the king Ahaziah is um, sending messengers to Ekron to get an oracle from Baal Zebul. You see? So even the biblical characters are using this God that he will give them predictions. And the biblical writers wrote so many filthy things regarding Baal and even Baal Zebul that he's connected with feces and with flies. I mean, it's clearly 
a hatred towards this God is clearly a hatred between those group of people against the people who worship other gods. And this was the major problem in ancient Israel with the ancient Hebrews because they always worshipped Baal. They always worshipped Astarte. And now it became this new stream of following a new god that demands, you know, to be the only god that he should be worshipped. So that was a real problem. And the people of Israel always came back to worship Baal. They always came back to worship Astarte, by the way. This is why the god Baal receives such a negative connotation and a negative attributes with the biblical writers. It's basically a war of gods. It's basically a war of worshippers. This is really ridiculous in my opinion because history is history and people were worshipping ancient gods before the Abrahamic religions were established. So basically, Yahweh wanted to take the throne of Baal in a way. Because God, the god Baal is the most strong god of the Levant and the ancient Near East. Also, I wanted to speak about the story on, on Mount Carmel. How the war between Yahweh priests and the priests of Baal is depicted in the biblical stories. So basically, the god Baal is a god that represents nature force. He's the god of the rain. He's the god of storms, of thunder. He's not a god at your request. He's not a demon. So basically, what we can see on Mount Carmel, the Hebrews are telling the priests of Baal that if your god is so strong, let the rain uh, pour. But the problem is that the god Baal, he's a weather god. And, you know, the rain season is coming when the rain is supposed to rain. But in the story, we can observe that suddenly Yahweh is uh, bringing fire to the, to the altar. And we can understand from that, if Yahweh brings fire... Those attributes are the attributes of genies, of demons. He's not representing any force. He's not representing any natural force. If he can do fire, and he always depicted as fire, you know, he's burning the bush. He's uh, always coming in the form of fire, which I find it to be very interesting. Those are demonic attributes. Those are attributes of genies. So maybe the god Yahweh is a genie. So it already makes him a lesser god than the nature force itself. Because the order of the cosmos, we do have nature forces. And the god Baal just represents this nature force. You know, rain, storms, and lightning. And there is a specific time when that force of nature is coming into our, into our existence, which is in the winter time in the Near East. But here suddenly we have Yahweh that is putting fire, brings fire to the altar, and, you know, showing this um, magic trick. So if he's doing magic tricks, he, if he brings fire to me from an esoteric point of view, he seems like a demon or a genie that have some capabilities. But he's definitely not a nature force. He cannot be powerful as Baal because there is only one powerful god. There is only one king of the gods. So now let's talk about the most controversial topic of the god Baal, which is child sacrifice. The biblical writers, the biblical, pe the, the Abrahamic religions people love to ride with this wave. They all like to say that the god Baal is connected with child sacrifice, that he's the devil, that he's evil, that people used to burn their children to him. 
and let's see the facts. There are many enemies to the Canaanites and Phoenicians. Phoenicians had a huge, devastating war with the Romans. You can read about Hannibal. You can read about uh, the war that was between Phoenicians, between Carthage and between the Romans. It was a bloody war that uh, was for a long time. And if the Phoenicians were winning the war with the Romans, the modern day today would be different because today we're influenced by the Romans. So that was a turning point in history. The Romans also wrote a lot of nasty things about the Phoenicians because they were the enemies of the Romans. Romans burned Carthage to the core because they were so angry. And in Carthage, the people were worshiping Baal, Hamon, and Tanit, who were a form of uh, the god Baal and Astarte. And in Carthage, they found a cemetery or some pits with a lot of uh, small children. And they said at the beginning that it probably was some sacrifice to the gods. But let's see the facts. So the practice of child sacrifice was recorded by Greeks and Romans, but dismissed as propaganda by modern scholars until archaeologists unearthed urns containing the cremated remains of infants in places of ritual sacrifice. Some scholars believe this confirms the accounts of child sacrifice, while others insist these are the remains of children who died young. So there is still this misconception. And some scholars are saying that, yes, it was child sacrifice. And some scholars are saying that it was remains of children who died young. I actually do not believe that it was child sacrifice because if that was child sacrifice, first of all, it is something that cannot be happening in a functioning society. This is neurosis. This is something that is not making any sense. I do believe that the urns that they found infants in Carthage they were the remains of, of dead children. So basically, if a child was dead, they probably were giving the child as an offering or as something sacred to the God, but not burning them alive and not killing them and giving this as an offering. Because again, you need to understand, this will be something that is cannot happen in, in a functioning society. It will bring chaos to the people. You understand? It just does not make in any sense. And let's say even if it was true. So why do we not find this um, ritual in other parts of the world? Why we cannot see child sacrifice to Zeus or to Thor? or to Perkunas, why we don't see child sacrifice to Teshub or to Hadad? You see, it does not make any sense, or to Marduk. Because if it was something that was practiced, for instance, we should see that also with gods that are equivalent to Baal Hamon. So personally, I do not believe that this is true. I do believe that those are children who died I do believe that those children are were already dead and they were given maybe as an something as a sacred ritual. I just don't believe that those children were sacrificed and brought to this god as a sacrifice because it does not make any sense. We should see that practice in more cultures if that was true, but we do not see that. So this is some information that the Abrahamic religions people like to ride on. They just love it. They like to 
destroy the reputation of the most powerful ancient Near Eastern god, Baal, and to say that he is an evil god, that, that the people practiced child sacrifice to him. I mean, this is just does not make any sense. I also want to mention a lot of conspiracy theorists that are taking some information and just bringing you some horrible, unrealistic, schizophrenic ideas regarding the god Baals. You know, a lot of people are liking to say that everything that is evil in the world, those are elite people who are worshipping the god Baal and they practice child sacrifice. This is all nonsense. You need to look at history. You need to look at the source. You need to look at the ancient texts. You need to understand that the god Baal, the storm god of the ancient Near East, was the most beneficial God to humanity. He was basically the archetype of God, of the most high one. He was the real God. And he was the God that battled evil. He was the God that battled the serpent. So he cannot be a force of evil. I mean, the stupidity of information that is happening in the world, unfortunately, is really, really destructive and not correct. Please go to the sources. Please read the Baal cycle. Please read more texts from the Hittites, from, from the Hurrians, from Mesopotamia. We also find the battle of Marduk with Tiamat. And Tiamat represents, in this specific text, dark forces, chaotic dark forces. I also want to mention that there is a text regarding Baal that I saw two translations. I saw a translation in English and I saw a translation in Hebrew. And they were a bit different in the meaning. And in that text, it's a prayer to the god Baal. And the prayer is talking about if the god Baal will eliminate our enemies, we will go to his temple, we will give him an offering, we will uh, worship the god Baal. And in the English tr translation, it is saying we will give a firstborn to the god. Now, first of all, a uh, term of the firstborn can mean a lot of things. It can be an animal firstborn. And we do find a lot of animal sacrifices to the gods, as it is in many, many parts of the world. But in the Hebrew translation, I did not saw that term at all. So this is something interesting. Again, I'm not a scholar, so, you know, I do not know everything, but I find it to be very strange that those two translations are a bit different. In the Hebrew, you, can, you do not see that term of first burn. It just says offering. There is this information regarding some nation of the Canaanites that were called the Moabim and they were worshipping their god Kamosh. And there were this custom amongst these people, again it is debatable, not sure, that they that the king had to sacrifice his firstborn to the god Kamosh in time of crisis and in time of a siege on his city. So basically that was an act of eliminating the enemy from the gates and to save his people, to save his nation, to save his city. Now we find this information from the book of Kings, from the Bible, and the scholars are divided in their interpretation of this theme. Some of the interpretations, some of the scholars are saying that the, the king of the Moabim sacrificed his own child in times of war, and some of the scholars are saying that he sacrificed the son of the Edomites, of Edom, and not his own child. So again, we need to take this information with a grain of salt. It's something that is coming from the biblical writers. 
there is no historical evidence for this. And this story somehow got associated with the storm god. And I want to mention that the god Kamosh is associated with Ares, which is a god of war and with the planet Mars. And the god Baal and Zeus is associated with Jupiter. So those are two different gods. So Kamosh cannot be associated with the storm god. So this story probably, you know, ignited the imaginations of the Abrahamic religious people, and they really liked to spread rumors and to say that this custom was for the storm god. Again, there is no evidence. We do not know. We have to understand that the writers of the Abrahamic religions are, of course, hating the god Baal. They hating the storm god. So again, we need to take all of this information with a grain of salt and stop with this craze that the biblical people are, you know, destroying the reputation of the storm god. Now, what I find to be more interesting is that while the biblical writers and the Abrahamic religious people like to spread rumors and to say false information that is not based in science, that is not based, not based on archaeological evidence, they have a story of a child sacrifice. There is an evidence that Yahweh is actually asking from Abraham to sacrifice his own child Isaac. He basically ordering him to do that. And Abraham is listening to his God and going to do that. He's preparing the altar and preparing his child for sacrifice. Then suddenly there is an angel that is appearing and saying that, oh no, you should not do that. It was just a test to see how devoted you are to your God and how far can you go with your worship. And then basically Abraham sees an animal and sacrifices the animal to Yahweh. So I find this to be very interesting that this God will actually want that his follower will do that. And this is actually a very horrible act because in the story of the Moabim, of the king of Moab, that wants to sacrifice his own child to the god Kamosh to save his own people. He's actually doing this to save his own people, to save his city, to save his nation. Like he's doing, he's giving this precious sacrifice to his god to eliminate the enemy because his own child, the firstborn, he's the most important to the king because this is his heir to the throne. But here in the Abrahamic religions, Yahweh is just testing and kind of a mocking Abraham because this is something horrible. Why would you want to ask your follower to do this act just because, just to see your devotion of how far you can go? This is some twisted story. The story of the king of Moabs is actually, again, debatable. There is no evidence for that. It's only coming from the biblical writers. But at least he wanted to do that for a greater cause, to help his own nation. But in the biblical story, it was just a form of nar narcissistic behavior from the God Yahweh, just to see how far can you go. So basically, that was very useless. We need to stop to associate the god Baal with child sacrifice because there is no evidence for that. Again, as I said earlier, if everyone was just, you know, killing to the left and right their own children, we could observe that in many cultures. We could observe that even in ancient Egypt, 
we could observe that in in Syria, in Mesopotamia, in the with the Hurrians, with the Hittites, we would have more texts about that. But clearly we do not have. And in Carthage, there is no evidence that it was child sacrifice. It was a cemetery for dead children. So again, the Abrahamic religions people really like to ride on this topic and really like to, you know, destroy the reputation of the god Baal and to say that he is an evil god, he's the devil, and he's connected with child sacrifice, which is actually false, and they should look at their own god because Yahweh is, I guess, also wanted some child sacrifice with no reason. So anyways, um, I also want to mention that the father of the prophet Muhammad, he was a worshiper of Hubal. And again, I guess in ancient Arabia, Hu Baal was also associated with the god Baal. So this is why he's the father of the prophet Muhammad was not permitted to go to heaven because he was a worshiper of Baal. I guess Hu Baal is a form of Baal. So that was the most important god of the people of the ancient Near East, from the north, from Anatolia to Arabia to ancient Egypt. And we can see his influence in the Nordic pantheon, in the Slavic pantheon, in the European cultures. So again, I do not believe in the child sacrifice. This is false information. It is probably a neurosis that came from some people in ancient times. People, you know, suffering from neurosis. And they probably took it too far. Even with the king that's supposed to save his kingdom, it's probably someone who had some neurosis. So we should eliminate that information. I mean, there is no evidence for that. And anyways, thank you for watching. Follow me on Instagram on Esoteric Rain. Support my work on Patreon. Please write in the comments what are your thoughts. And see you in my next videos. Thank you for watching.